On Monday, September 19, 2022, while in her retreat for the sake of the world, our most caring Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously called Supreme Master Television team members to kindly inquire about their health and well-being. During the conference, Master also shared her invaluable insights and wisdom while responding to questions raised by the team amidst the recent events in the United Kingdom the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the beginning of His Majesty King Charles III's reign. Because of the ascension of King Charles III, some yeah. people protest that they don't want the King to rule over them. Yeah. What does Master think about people protesting? Oh, they have the right to protest, of course. They have the right to fight. <laughs> their opinion, because England is a free country. Yes. But they should think, England is one of the best countries in the world to live in, king or not. Right? Yes. Yes, yes Master. And it could be due to the monarchy that England has been very stable and respected by other countries in the world. You know, Her Majesty the Queen of England just left the world and all the leaders in the world came to pay their respect. Yes, yes that's right. Yes. Yeah. No individual motorcades, but coaches to ferry even the world's princes and presidents ensuring arrivals ran like clockwork. The emperor and empress of Japan, for whom funeral appearances are rare because of their Shinto faith, shared a bus with the king and queen of Bhutan. Has there ever been a world event where such thought must have gone into the seating arrangements of so many foreign dignitaries and royal families coming to pay their respects to the Queen? Leaving Westminster Abbey, the rare sight of royalty waiting for a bus and forming a queue. But a sign of the global reverence commanded by Queen Elizabeth II amongst the world leaders who came together to lay her to rest. All of them, and even Putin also wanted to come. They did met him. And uh, I saw it on the news that one of uh, his allies closed in front of the Queen's uh, coffin and they protested. They filmed about it. Yeah. So these people, if they want to protest, I didn't see a lot anyway, but of course they can express their opinion. But if they don't like England, they don't like the Queen, they could go somewhere else, they could immigrate. You know, nowadays you can immigrate anywhere. Yes. 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 If they think some other country is better without king, then they can go. Maybe they prefer Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should live under Putin then. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Not a good idea. No. <laughs> For example, you think they like that? No. 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 Okay. Maybe King Charles, of course. Humanly speaking, is not perfect in their eyes, but he's not the worst leader in the world. Don't you think? No, no master. master. He is not. By the way, he's just symbolic, and he doesn't mess with the political system of England. English people decide for themselves who manages their affairs, their votes, and their parties that choose leaders. Yeah. Yes. yes, Master. So... They should not uh, worry about King Charles too much. And now that the Queen has just left the world, they should show some more sympathy, be more supportive, so that he has the strength to think well and to do good things in their interest. Don't you think? Yes, yes, yes Master. Master. What is your opinion? Well, um, there were also a couple of pen signing incidences. When he was formally proclaimed as King Charles III, when signing the important document, he seemed to get upset that the ink tray was not in the correct position. And he signaled for someone to quickly move it. He said, the servants should have to move these things. I am not to be expected to move these things. So is it the servant's fault that these things happen? You know, this is a price to pay when you depend on other people to work for you. You can't always have things the way you want. First of all, I would not use the word servant if I were you, okay? Because we all serve. They serve, but they are not servants. 
servants nowadays in terms of the way they use servants is very degrading for humans. Do you understand me? Yes, yes, yes master. master. That's true. Mm. We are serve, and the king is a bigger servant than all of them because he has to serve all the people of his country if he gets the concept right. Yeah. Yes. Uneasy are the heads that bear the crown. Okay? Yes. 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 We all have problems and being the king is not an envious position to me. It's a lot of responsibility, a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble to wait in. And of course, like the Buddha said, no one will absolutely be a hundred percent blamed or praised. Everyone in this world, one way or another, one day or another, will be blamed or will be praised, but not always completely either side. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes master. master. So, you see, I think it's the queen's fault. Oh. oh. Not the servant's fault, not the prince's fault. Some people say, oh, that's how we know how he treats his servants. It's not like that. Maybe he didn't treat his so-called servants that way before. It's just because the queen's a sudden death that throws everybody into disarray mentally. Do you understand me? Oh, yes, oh, master. yes, master. All of them love the queen. All the workers in the royal household love the queen. And they have been serving the prince for decades already. So he has never complained. It's just that this time, they're all very, very sad, very sorrowful. So they probably forget what to do for the right thing. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes master. master. That's the number one thing. Number two, they have never done this before. This is the first time they have to prepare a tray for the prince to sign such important documents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Once in his lifetime. Yes, that's right. So they're just all confused. Right, master. yes, that's true. And too sad to, to even put their mind together. They're just humans. And it's not the, the prince's fault either. Of course, he just loves his mother, his most beloved mother. Yes, master. Yes. And he has no time to even mourn her or anything. He, he's not allowed to. He has to immediately take on the most responsible position in England. And in his heart, he is pain. Understand me? He pains. He cries. Yes. And somehow, he feels like he needs everyone to be his father and mother to make up for mm. his loss. He just lost his father as well, not long ago. Yes. Remember? Yes, yes, that's, yes. True. yes that's true. His Royal Highness Prince Philip also just left the world not long ago, and now he lost his mother. So he's become an orphan, you know, and he feels like a big emptiness in his life. And somehow, unconsciously, he tried to grab everybody's love and affection for him to fill that gap. Right, yes. yes. Understand, Master. I know that because I lost my parents. Of course, I never told you this, but it's not like... Not like I'm a stone or something. And least of all, King Charles the Third. Yes, yes, master. master. He has been loved, pampered, and spoiled in the arms of his parents. And suddenly he lost, you know, one after another like that. <laughs> his sorrow broke out as a temper. Do you understand me? Yes, yes, yes master. He felt so lost, so helpless. And he expected unconsciously that the people around him would understand that and would give him all the care to minus details, all the love that they would show him to make up for what he lost somehow. Yes. yes. But the so-called servants, you know, they also lost themselves because the queen died. You see what I'm saying? Yes. 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 No, sir. But both of them are in need. Both of them are in trouble. And both cannot help each other. That's the only problem. Okay? Yes. Yes. So it's nobody's fault. It's just they love the queen too much. Right. And when you love somebody too much and you lose them, then you are in big trouble. You cannot think straight. You understand that or not? Yes, yes master. master. To my darling mama, as you begin your last great journey to join my dear late papa, I want simply to say this, thank you, thank you 
for your love and devotion to our family and to the family of nations you have served so diligently all these years. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now any other question before I keep going? <laughs> yes, Master. What would you call people who work for you in your household then? <laughs> Did you ever hear me call them servants? No, no master. master. Okay. Well, Lynn Winterstale, one of the celebrity singers in Hollywood, she even proclaimed that when um, somebody so asked her, she, she said, I serve them. I brought food to them from the kitchen. I had no servant. Remember that? Remember that? Uh, in Cancun, before they were singing on the stage, I invited them to my uh, hotel room and served them some food and talked to them. Because I love artists. Yes. Yes. I love her. I'm calling her Mommy Heart. We, we had a, a special treat to meet her. Um, I guess a brunch. And she had us up to her room. And... Uh, she cooked for us. I mean, it was a spread of food, and there's so much more backstage that she brought, and she wants everybody to take a bag of food home. So she's, um, she's quite remarkable. She really is. Mommy Heart, I love you. It was an honor to meet her. My consciousness is, is elevated. It really is. I met her this morning for the first time, and she actually served as lunch. It's not like she had servants or something. She's wonderful. She's like a mother. She's an earth mother to the world, and she was that same way with us as she was here tonight. That's that's pretty terrific when you can be with a few people or you could be with hundreds of people and have that warmth and have that sincerity and have that love. She's a great lady, great example for the world. I hope our future is in her dreams and in our dreams and that we have a better, safer, cleaner world. Not because they sing on that occasion. They sing for the people who came, the IPs and all the people who came to that hotel that day for the green ceremony, to give some green awards to some people who are champions for a vegan and green world. Remember that in Cancun? Yes. Yes. Not because they came and sing for our invite party, but because I love them. And I was so happy to have a chance to even see them. So I invited them to my room and gave them whatever food we had at that time. And they were so happy. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> she said she has no servants, meaning Master has no servants. Anyway, I call them my helpers, my assistants. You heard that many times, right? Yes, yes, yes Master. Master. And mostly they don't work in my household anyway. They work for dogs. <laughs> 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 so even if I need them sometimes to help me carry heavy stuff, that I cannot do alone. I have to wait. Because I say, oh, we are with the dogs now. We are feeding the dogs. We are taking the dogs out. We are uh, making sure the dogs are comfortable. Uh, could you please wait? <laughs> 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 so what would I do? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I will wait, ma'am. I will wait, sir. <laughs> yeah, often I make joke with it. I never call him so. My God, I don't remember so. I don't remember ever saying that. Did you ever hear me say that? No, no master. master. Yeah, when I talk to you about them, I say they are dog managers or dog caretakers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> dog uh, protectors, dog guardians, but I don't call them so. I don't dare. I never think about that. I never think about that word to give them. I, I never thought like that because they are children of God. How dare I say anything like that? Huh? Yes, Master. Yes, master. There are no servants in this world. They are only children of God assigned to different duties to keep the world functioning. Understand me? Hmm? Understand. Yes, yes master. master. Suppose the king rules England, or any king rules any country, without any of these so-called servants, can they even rule? 
No, no master. master. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not as well. <laughs> Maybe they can. <laughs> they have to be retrained in the opposite direction of the way they have been trained to be. Yeah. Yes, Master. Like, for example, Prince Charles, do not blame him too much. He has been trained differently. He has been groomed to be the king. And in the old tradition, the king rules the country. Okay, the top, number one, over everybody else. And the king's order, everybody has to obey. And everyone has to work for the king, not vice versa. Yeah? But they forget the king also has to work. It's just different jobs. Yes, master. Yes, master. Yeah, he has to see the people. He has to see all the diplomats. He has to see all the leaders. And he has to spend his time to read documents, to sign documents, to go out sometime for the charity purposes and all kinds of things that they have to do. Yes. You, you can't just sit there doing nothing. Yes, yes, right. yes master. master. And uh, I heard that Prince Philip, the Duke of uh, Edinburgh before, uh, took care of more or less the grooming of the then Prince Charles. With the Queen often absent, Prince Philip made the decisions about the family and his relationship with his eldest son was not always easy. Charles always had a difficult relationship with Philip. He could never live up to Philip's ideas of how he should be. He even didn't let Prince Charles at that time know much about the worldly stuff. Oh. Just all concentrated on being a prince and a future king. That's all that he had learned. And even he had to ask one of the former prime ministers to teach him how to receive a prime minister in a mock theatre acting. Oh, yeah. I uh, had audiences with Prince Charles when Queen Elizabeth II was still on the throne because he wanted to start thinking about how to conduct those audiences. And from what I saw, he, he will be brilliant at that job, brilliant at listening, brilliant at asking questions, um, giving wise advice and sage counsel. I mean, this has probably been the longest apprenticeship in history. Like rehearsing it so that when he became a king in the future, he would know what to do. Yes. He has to learn many diplomatic rules, many kingly rules and royalty rules, and he has learned what he has been taught. Yes, yes, yes master. master. So he has to act the way the king would act, according to tradition, maybe now modern times, they have to do it a little bit differently. I even heard that, therefore, Prince Charles does not even have to squeeze his toothpaste in the morning. And he doesn't know things about what the people around him are doing in his household. Like he doesn't know what cling wrap plastic is. So one time he saw it and he shook and yelled. <laughs> Probably just jokingly, but like it was scary for him, like jokingly <laughs> scared. Uh, yeah, because uh, yeah. he, he never saw that before. <laughs> Imagine that. Yes. yes. Wow. In the book Rebel Prince, author Tom Bauer revealed that Charles was unable to identify a very common household item. As it turns out, he didn't know what plastic wrap was. After asking staff to leave food out for him to eat later in the day, Charles reportedly let out a shriek upon discovering the leftovers. The heir had allegedly been frightened upon encountering the cold meats covered by the unknown product, prompting him to ask his wife, Camilla Parker Bowles, what the product was. Using the British name for it, Camilla had to inform him that it was, in fact, called cling film. That's how Prince Philip groomed him to become a monarch. And he had also been uh, in uh, school. It's half normal for princes and princesses. And also they didn't groom him in the normal student way. More or less they would know he's a future king. The way they behave toward him could not be as normal as with other students. Yes, yes, yes right. Right. So the king's uh, position, it just has a glorious side of uh, worldly look, but it's not all that easy to perform. Yes, I yes, understand. Master. Master. King Charles spent decades preparing for the throne. From the moment of birth, he needed to be prepared to be a suitable monarch for Great Britain. He was trained since he was a little kid already. Not in a, just a normal household or a normal manner, even though they try to show it to the world, like the prince has to do things like normal students, the normal people, it's not all that normal. Yes, Master. 
When Charles was invested as the Prince of Wales on his 21st birthday, his life of royal duty began in earnest. I, Charles, Prince of Wales, do become your liege man of life and limb and of earthly worship. So I think the people of England should understand and tolerate him or forgive him if they think he's wrong. It's not all black and white like that. Yes, yes, yes master. master. Uh, what else did he do? Well, in another incident, yeah. when signing a visitor's book in Northern Ireland, yeah. the pen leaked and King Charles III got really annoyed and he showed some temper. Uh -huh. Also, yeah. this is an old topic, but when the then Prince Charles was married to Princess Diana, he had an extramarital affair with Camilla, his now wife. Could these also be some reasons why people protest against the new king? Mm, properly, yes. Some people can be very strict to then their father and mother, uh. <laughs> Prince Philip and Her Majesty the Queen of England, the late Queen of England. Some people are strict. But Jesus said, whoever has not sinned and throw the first stone. Mm. Yes, yes, Master. Yes, Master. Prince Charles has so many good sides that people don't see. He has worked very hard all his life for all kinds of charitable organizations to bring in the money to help the poor people and the needy people, yeah, and he has to see many people, he has to travel a lot, even if he doesn't want to. He has to do all these things that he might not always like. Yes, Master. Yes, master. Imagine if you are him, you are forced to travel to such and such country that you don't like, and maybe at that time you are sick and you are under the flu, uh, and then uh, you have the fever or you are not well, you still have to travel or you have to see some people leader of the world that you don't really like. Yes, true. yes. And for being a prince, he's really... Uh, of course, I told you about the temple, yeah? Yes. The, both of the so-called servants, yeah? The helpers of the royal household and the prince, they were under stress. Right. Mm. And when you were under stress, because the queen's sudden death left the big emptiness in their heart for the moment. So both of them are under terrible stress. And it's a new job for the householders and a new job for the prince. You see what I'm saying? Prince Charles, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Then both of them are in a new situation, so they did not do well. That's just more things, you know. It's not such a big deal that you even would want to describe a king. Uh, yes, 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 yes master. master. So I think Prince Charles needs a little bit more sympathy from everyone. Not just criticizing. Give him a chance to be a good king. Okay? He will learn with his job. <sighs> He's only a human, even though he is a king. And he has more jobs than you, most of the people. More responsibility, a heavier burden than many people in the world. So give him a little room, a little uh, chance, a little love. Encourage him to continue to work. He's also an old man now. He's 73, isn't he? Yes, huh? yes. Yeah, and the so-called servants, you know, the royal workers, they should concentrate more. Well, they could not. Their minds, their hearts are in turmoil. Yes, yes. yes. Master. It's a new arrangement for them. They never did that before. Probably seldom. And the prince, of course, is upset because he already was upset. Yeah, he was already upset already because his mother... A death caused him great sorrow. Right. And suddenly he's thrown into a big situation like that. And he's already overly upset. He could not even cry in the public. He couldn't even express well how he feels. It doesn't matter how well he expresses. You can never express enough how you feel when your parent dies. And then any little thing is seems blown out of proportion. Yeah? Yes. 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 But he has learned. The third time he had to sign something, he bought his own pen. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. So he improved, man. Give him a chance to improve. <laughs> yes, master. yes, master. And even some public people, they feel sorry for him. One person gives him a pen, <laughs> in case. <laughs> <laughs> Many people are queuing outside of the palace or a residence to mourn her, to show their love. And sometimes 
uh, the king, His Majesty King Charles, came out and greeted them and saw the uh, appreciation. And one of them gave him a pen. <laughs> oh, that's the that idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> yes. Instead of criticizing him, just help him to be better. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Help him through his job. I am not like a fan of royalty or stuff like that. I, I don't feel <laughs> much connection with royalty stuff. But it's just fairly speaking. We are humans. We should understand, sympathize and help each other. That's better for the world than criticizing all the time for any little mishap, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? We agree. That's true. The other ones? <laughs> Yes, we agree. Yes, we, yes, we agree. Okay. Yeah, you should, you should. To be a good human, you should. Yes, yes, Master. Yeah, you know, and the new king, uh, His Majesty King Charles the Third, probably is still very nervous in his new role. Wouldn't you be? Yes, Master. yes. Even though all his life he knew that this day might happen, but what you know and what you face is different. Yeah, indeed. Yes, that's true. What you fear and what comes to you when that fear manifests is different. You will react differently. You will feel different. Yes, yes, yes master. master. So, he has to mourn his, his mother in his heart. He's in deep sorrow and he has to dress up, you know, looking tough and normal and smile and go do whatever they expect him to do. Imagine that. Is that a very stressful position already? No? Yes, 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 yes. People might think, oh, being a king is glorious and, and glamorous and powerful and all that. Yes, maybe. But the reality of the free world is different. It's very stressful and demanding also. Hmm? Yes. And he's an old man, eh? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Before, of course, he works also, but it's not like being a king. Being a prince is different from being a king. Yes, yes, yes master. master. Because he still has his parents yeah. to rely on and to lean on. And yeah, he still feels very young and like a child. That's how I felt when I saw my parents. I feel like I could do anything and never be blamed for anything. <laughs> because I'm a child of my parents. Understand, Master. <laughs> Understand, Master. Yes. Yeah. I never feel like I have to be more responsible, serious, because I'm teaching meditation. <laughs> <laughs> when I see my parents, I feel like a child. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm so proud to be a child who has parents. Never mind, I should not like it to my situation, because each one is different. But I feel very sorry for the new king, King Charles, because he's facing Double trouble waters. Understand. Yes, yes master. master. Deeply double trouble waters. Uh, uh, so I think the whole of England will help, support, encourage him. Okay, send him some love, good prayers, so that he can be strong and continue to work for them. Hmm. Because that's what he does, working for his country. Of course, he gets paid for it, and he has a lot of properties and, and a lot of money because of inheritance. But that doesn't help you when you're in sorrow or when you have a big burden of responsibility, does it? Right. right. Yes. No, it will be meaningless. Yes. yes. How much can you eat per day? Mm. Unless that <laughs> yes. And how many clothes can you throw on your body every day? Huh? Yes. Yes. How much money can you spend per day? For what? Even if you have a lot of money. Yes. Uh, and uh, didn't you mention about uh, his affair? Yes, his affair before. Okay, okay. Well, maybe the Church of England should have taught him more strongly about that. Uh, but uh, you cannot tell your heart whom to love. This is the problem of humans. Mm, yes, Master. King Charles III he has m many good qualities people should look into. I don't know if he is going to be a good king yet, but 
as a prince, he, he was good. You know, good enough. He did all I expected from him. Whatever he could, whatever he believes in. Yes. He even does two days a week uh, vegan. You know that, right? Yes, mm. Master. Is it true, right? Yes. How many leaders in the world uh, even do that? Tell me. Yeah, not many. No. How many kings? I mean, top leaders like kings, you know, presidents, the prime ministers. And who even tries to be vegan? Oh, except Boris Johnson. But how many kings or maybe they do quietly, but I don't hear of any that even for sec once a week the meat and the animal people product. Did you? No, no master. master. So he's doing better than others already, huh? Yes, yes, that's right. He will never order to fight with anybody, kill anybody or make war or inciting war, anything like that, did he? No, no, no Master. And so at least he's a peaceful leader. Yes, true. Yes. And even tries to be vegan. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's very good. Yeah, he tries very hard. Since he was young, he's been fed with all the animal people products. And he could just quit it twice a week. That's already something. Yes, yes, master. yes master. Yes. And he always advocates for protecting the forest, protecting the Amazon and stuff like that. Yes, yes. He's very active on that. Yes. Yeah. How many prince, how many kings, how many presidents do that? Huh? Not many. That's right. Not many. Are there? No. 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 Yeah. Yes, yes. Except that Arab prince. There is a prince of one of the Arab countries. He did that. He became vegan. And I'm deeply grateful for that. And I'm in awe of that. Also, the late president of Slovenia, Janet Dunovcek, was vegan. Very rare, yes. isn't it? But he passed away already. And the then Prince Charles had tried many things. The business of, of what we eat, of course, is important. I mean, I've, <laughs> for years, I've, uh, I haven't eaten meat and fish on two days a week. And I don't eat dairy products on one day a week. Now, I mean, that's one way to do it. If you did that, if more did that, you would reduce a lot of the pressure on the environment. And, everything. and also concerning the affair of the then Prince Charles and his now wife, the Queen Consort Camilla, well, he's a prince. Many other princes have many more affairs than that. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. Yes, Master. Yes. Other princes, not many, but some, and worse things than that. And he has only one. And I really felt shattered when Princess Diana died. And may her soul forgive me for what I'm saying. But perhaps this is the price that His Majesty King Charles III had to pay in order to become king, to rule England as well as the Commonwealth. And another price to pay to be with his loved one, because the Queen Consort, Camilla, was and still is the love of his life. Yes. Mm. They were in love or uh, have been some deep affection before he married Princess Diana. He did not really want to marry Princess Diana before, you know, before the marriage. But it was Prince Philip who was instrumental in creating this marriage. He even told him, she's still a virgin. If you wait longer, you will never have a chance to marry a virgin. Uh -huh. Something like that. I read it on the news before, a long time ago. So you see, being a prince, and he was young as well, and it's not all that easy for him mm -hmm. to disobey his very strict father. Yes, yes master. master. He was not just a prince, he was a son, and very dutiful and obedient son as well. Yes. He has not done anything I know that goes against his mother or his father up to date. All that I have known about. And even when Her Royal Highness Princess Diana died, after a long, long time, he wanted to marry the love of his life, Camilla. The Queen did not want it. Mm -hmm. And she even called Camilla that time, the wicked woman. So even then, Prince Charles also 
did not marry his now wife Camilla, mm. according to all the news that I read. Yes, yes, master. yes, master. He was a very dutiful and obedient prince. Long ago, one of his ancestors, the king of England, King Edward VIII, he even forsook the whole kingship and the whole of England, the whole world, just to marry his divorced American mistress. He was the one who abdicated himself and forsook all his duties and glory and title and kingdom in order to marry the woman he loved. He said he cannot function without the woman he loved. So in this sense, Prince Charles was a very beautiful, very obedient son of his parents. Yes, 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 yes master. master. So there was quite a very rare and good quality for a prince who has been spoiled all his life. Yes, yes master. master. And through all this, he did not show that he wanted to marry Princess Diana. And even Her Royal Highness Princess Diana also knew that from the wedding night already, according to reports. He let her know that already, somehow. The night before their wedding, Prince Charles apparently felt he owed it to his young fiancée to tell her how he really felt before making such a life-altering commitment. Diana's astrologer relayed what the princess confided to her the night before she wed Charles. She said, Charles told her that he didn't love her. I think Charles didn't want to go into the wedding on a false premise. And during all the marriage, he just had physical intimacy with her only when she initiated, also according to reports because his heart was in love with another woman, his now wife, Queen Camilla. Yes. Mm. Charles and Camilla met at Polo in 1971. Their attraction was mutual and continued beyond her marriage to Guards Officer Andrew Parker Bowles. She was able to satisfy him in a way that no other woman ever has done. I've come to the conclusion that really it would have been far easier to have had two wives <laughs> he wore some cufflinks that Camilla had given him with two C's entwined. He wore those on the honeymoon. Prince Charles and Camilla were speaking very intimately about uh, what they like to do together and how much they miss each other. Did you try to be faithful and honourable to your wife when you took on the vow of marriage? Yes, absolutely. And you were? Yes. Until it became irretrievably broken down. Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. The institution of monarchy won't die overnight because of a few broken marriages. It survived the constitutional crisis 60 years ago when King Edward VIII abdicated to marry an American divorcee, Wallace Simpson. Prince Charles and Diana's divorce was finalized on the 28th of August, 1996. One revelation that's never previously come to light points to some peace. Diana did tell me something quite interesting. She said on the day of the divorce, she and Charles sat down together on the sofa and they both cried. By the time the divorce was actually finalized, they were on much better terms. Charles finally married that third person in his first marriage, Camilla Parker Bowles, who he had reportedly never fallen out of love with over the years. So now, you see, he's a very faithful man, faithful to his love, true to his heart. Mm. How many men can claim to be like that? Yes, master. Yes, master. Least of all, a prince who has all the power to have fun all around. So people should look into some of his good qualities, respectful qualities, to give him some more support, some more sympathy. If cannot give love, but listen sympathy. Imagine if he is you, how would you feel? What would you do to make a better job out of the king's job? It's a job he has a lot of force and cons as well, like every other job. It's just more special, that's all. Yes, 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 yes. So now they are legally married. And even with the blessing of the queen, the queen even bestowed the title in advance to Camilla as the queen consort, because he saw that Camilla was really good for Prince Charles at that time. Queen 
Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee and marking the occasion by making a big announcement to publicly announce her wish that Prince Charles's wife be given the title of Queen. In a statement writing, it is my sincere wish that Camilla will be known as Queen Consort. Earlier this year, Queen Elizabeth made a once unthinkable proclamation, Camilla will be Queen. By thy blessing, let these rings be to Charles and Camilla, a symbol of unending love and faithfulness, and of the promises they have made to each other. For years now, Camilla has been one of the busiest senior royals, throwing herself into public life. She supports many causes near and dear to her heart. She's an incredibly supportive woman, and it's a tough job to do. What they do is difficult. And I think that anybody who's in that role will need a partner that they can have a joke with at the end of the day or just kick their shoes off and have a chat. Camilla keeps Charles III grounded. She's very family orientated. I don't think she ever sought a public role. That wasn't where she wanted to be. But this is the role that she's ended up doing for the man that she loves. I count on the loving help of my darling wife, Camilla. In recognition of her own loyal public service since our marriage 17 years ago, she becomes my queen consort. King Charles at his first address to the public, praising his wife, now his queen consort, Camilla. Their life in the public eye, a journey of decades, and there was some doubt along the way about what her new title would be. But of course, it was among Queen Elizabeth's final wishes that Camilla be called queen consort. So if we love the queen, then we should also follow her advice, follow her wish, and do better things for England instead of stirring up more trouble. Don't you think? Yes, yes, yes I agree. think so. Hmm. And you yourself will ask the question, what do you feel in your heart? Am I right? I mean, are you happy with my answer? Yes, I agree. You're right, definitely. Yeah, not because I'm your master, but tell me how you would feel if you were him. It's, it's logical, and yeah. you would want to follow your heart. I mean, your heart overpowers everything. How can one ignore one's heart and be true to that? Yes, it's true also. It's like that. If you're in love with somebody, you can't help it. Right. Yes. That's why people say, <laughs> you fall in love. Yeah. <laughs> fall in. Yes. yes, Master. You're not standing in love. <laughs> <laughs> you're not sitting in love, you're falling in. Fall. Yeah. You just fall. Yes. And in fact, they say, could have put. <laughs> <laughs> in Olak or Vietnam, they say, Game set item. Oh. Meaning the thunder. The thunder of love just hits you. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that means you're helpless. You're dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only your heart is the one that is still alive and dictating your move. That's why many people do many crazy things because they fall in love. They fall <laughs> in <laughs> love. Yes. Also, that's the arrangement so that he will have some blemishes to be a king. We have to pay for everything we have in this world. You know that, right? Yes, 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 yes Master. Mm -hmm. Even if we don't want to, or even if we don't know, it is karma that arranges that way. And uh, I tell you a secret. They were lovers before. Oh, wow. The previous oh. life. Yeah. They were royalty and were lovers before this life. Oh, wow. wow. So after some lifetimes, they still have this uh, impression in their subconscious. So when they met each other, it just hit. Oh, mm -hmm. right, right. Like you hit the target. Yes, yes master. master. But even then, they were thinking, oh, it's not possible. They were too young also. At that time, they were young. Yes. And he was busy as a prince. Yes. And she was busy with her stuff. And then one way or another, it was just arranged that way that she married before he did. Yes, yes, that's right. And then afterwards, he also has no choice. But then somehow they met each other again and then things just happened. Yes, Master. I don't condone anything like that. Yes, Master. I'm just telling you a secret. Yes. So if you feel anything not peaceful in your heart about the then Prince Charles and Camilla, then please don't carry it. Don't carry this burden. Understand, Master. Understand, yes. Do you feel okay now? Yes, it's clear now. Thank you very much for helping to clarify that. Yeah. We wish them well, all right? Yes, yes, yes Master. Master. We wish them happy and strength so that they can continue to carry whatever burdens their job will heap upon them. 
and the world will show their way. Yes, Master. Yes, master. master. Any other question at all? Uh, people have uh, criticized the Queen because she is the head of some uh, colonized nations. Uh, mm. Could Master please share your, your thoughts on this? Oh dear, you always drag me into politics, huh? Oh. <laughs> And who's going to get the trouble for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. If you trust me, I am obliged to answer, to to clear your mind. And I know many people ask this question around the world. The same with the questions your brothers asked before. They are all over the world. They ask. They just don't know whom to ask and where to ask. Oh. Yes. So I might as well answer you in order to clear other people's minds as well, if they let me. Yes. Thank, yes, you, master. Master. Thank, Thank you, master. Thank you, master. It's like that. It's not the queen's fault, is it? The colonization happened long, 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 long before she was even born. Yes. yes. True. And so it just continues that way, and she just became a symbolic head of the Commonwealth, they call it. And the the British, they don't just colonize; they help also. Yes. Yes. Many of the uh, former colonized countries admitted that. And they always welcome the the British passport people with uh, warmth and affection because the British also help them in many different ways. Yes, master. Yes, master. Yes, master. I heard that some of the uh, so-called Commonwealth countries are attempting or thinking or wanting to be independent. It's okay. It's all their free will to to choose. If their people agree to that, and their parliament has to agree to that as well then uh, they, they can uh, apply to be independent. If they think it's better for their country to be independent, then they should go forward in that direction, if their people also want it. Some countries don't want to. Yes. They want to stay with the British. Yes. Uh, together also is a strength, united with them. Yes, 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 that's right. But if they think, or if they can prove, or if they have uh, the statistics or research somehow to prove that, uh, to be alone, to be independent from the British Union, then they they should uh, go in that way. If it's better for their country, why not? Huh? But if it's not better for their people, for their country, then why bother about the name? Yes, yeah. yes, that's true. They have to ask their people. They have to listen to their people, see what their people want. And they have to do research or ask somebody to research for them to prove that. Being independent is really, really better for their country. You know, outweighing the disadvantages, then they should do it. It depends. It depends on what country or, or in which situation or the way their people want it. Right? Yes, yes. She was respected greatly across the Commonwealth and by the leaders of the Commonwealth. She uh, mingled with so many leaders from generations of leaders. She really, in one person, personifies for me, someone who uh, shows the difficult transition from empire to independence and somehow managed to keep a, an amicability, a cordiality with where it could have been much more fraught and contested with different parts of the once colonial world. In some ways, she was quite remarkable in assisting in the transition from empire, which obviously was a colonial construct to the Commonwealth, which was more a voluntary meeting of all these of many different countries around the world. Uh, the monarchy of England is also very well beloved. The proof is that people from all over the world, they came and queued for 10, 12 hours. Even uh, David Beckham, you know, the famous yes, yes. football star. Yes, yes. Even he waited for 12 hours wow. in order to see her coffin, to pay respect. And he was very emotional, crying. Well, remembering yeah. her and you know all leaders in the world came to pay respect to her even Putin wanted to <laughs> <laughs> and was denied of course Yes, yes master. Master. All of these world leaders and, and members of European royal families in attendance. At Westminster Abbey holds 2,000 people and millions are expected to descend on the capital to pay their respects.
not all the people who protest against the monarchy or uh, against uh, His Majesty the new King Charles the Third should think twice before they take any action to see a problem in a peaceful country and a good country. Yes, I yes, understand. understand. Many people envy England and want to come to live in England. So if they are British, they live in England, they should be happy, be proud. That's right, Master. And there will always be some little problems here and there, but one king cannot do everything. It depends on also many factors and the decision from the parliament and the English government as well. Even the queen, they should not blame her for anything. She doesn't have all the power to decide everything concerning political issues. For example, they arrange whom she has to meet, to shake hand with, to talk with, even though she doesn't want to. Uh, legend has it that one time, you know, people saw that she had to hide behind the bushes in Buckingham Palace Garden oh. because she did not want to talk to one of the world's leaders again one more time. She hid from him. Oh. People could not find her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she had to hide. She had no power to, to even refuse. She hid. Mm. She, mm. she hid herself because she didn't want to talk to that person again because she didn't like that president at that time. And he was supposed to be one of the bad ones. You, you do research on that and then you will know. Yes, yes, yes master. master. She could see the Ceausescu's coming the other way and thinks, I can't, really can't face talking to them. So for the first and only time in her life, she actually hides in a bush in the palace garden to avoid her own guests. The Queen puts up with uh, having many different people, but Ceausescu was too much. She could not just do everything she wanted. Even, for example, if there's some unrest somewhere, or like Kenya or something, they will report to her differently. They will say, oh, this kind of people, they uh, they are terrorists, uh, they're killing that and these uh, people, they're killing that government. And uh, now we have to take an army to, to quell this terrorist approach that makes unrest in the country of Kenya, for example, like that. She cannot say, oh no, you cannot. Yes, I understand. Even though she's a queen, but she doesn't have the power everywhere in all departments of the government to make decisions. Yes. So people should understand more about this uh, complicated and you know, difficult political body of the world to be appreciative of a good king that you really have in the world. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Yes, master. Uh, there's uh, one, one time Her Royal Highness Princess Anne, Queen Elizabeth II's daughter. Yes. I, I read in the news that she said the Queen told her that oh, sometimes she didn't agree if she could not agree with the prime minister or the government about doing something and she could not argue out of it, then she just let it be. She just let them be. Let them do it. Yes, yes, master. Yes, master. So the, the prime minister and the government has also a lot of power to even refuse the queen's advice or decision. Yes, yes master. master. So the queen was more or less like a symbol of the monarchy and most of the Political decisions came from the government, prime minister, parliament, etc. Yes, yes, master. I swear by Almighty God. And even you see, appointing the prime minister of England, like the latest one, Madame Listras, they they picked her first, and then they presented her to the queen. Yes, yes master. It wasn't the queen who picked her. So they presented her to the queen and the queen just agreed to it and let her be prime minister. I doubt she could just refuse. Uh, Madame Lise goes and say, no, I don't want her. <laughs> 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 I don't think the queen could say, oh no, kick her out. Get Boris Johnson back for me. <laughs> for example, like that. So. People who blame the Queen and hate the Queen as a colonizer's head and all that, uh, they should not, okay? They should not. She was a very good Queen. Understand, Master. Yeah, she was loving. Because if she was not, all the people who work around her would have not talked so well about her.
after she died. Yes, yes. And during her reign also, during her time of life on earth as well, nobody has said anything bad about the queen at all. Including all the household, the household people are the ones who should know her the most. Yes, yes, right. yes, Master. She was a wonderful boss. We used to put up a red box every evening, and we knew that she would have been through them, and it would be back on our desk the next morning at eight o'clock. It was extraordinary how she did this day after day throughout her reign. She changed the role of monarchy by introducing the idea of voluntary service into the official role of monarchy. Her Majesty is one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. Uh, for somebody of her age, the things she was doing, the events she was attending, sometimes three events in a day, it was absolutely remarkable. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it was fun being a private secretary and one of my predecessors said, you never come out of your morning session with the Queen feeling worse than when you went in. She had a sense of humour. She was very interested in people. It was my privilege to see Her Majesty quite a lot. And in all those interactions, there was a courtesy and a humanity and a kindness that I'll remember forever. In a way, I didn't have an apprenticeship. My father died much too young. It was all a very sudden kind of taking on and making the best job you can. And all the politicians in England are still respectful to her. You see, the monarchy should be respected, appreciated and sustained because you can see the Queen. She's the Queen of England and in some countries. At the moment, maybe only like 14, 11 of the Commonwealth, but people all over the world who don't even know her, who never even care about royalty, they all lined up in the street, many, many miles long. Some had to wait 24 hours to pay respect to her coffin. Yes, yes. So this is the right thing, you know. You don't have to go and pay respect and wait for 24 hours, but still, she was someone that people loved and respected. She brought this kind of, uh, how do you say, positive energy to the world. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes master. master. Yes, Master. Because she was kind and good. Yes. So her son shouldn't be too far from that quality. Yes, Master. Yes, master. They should support him. Yeah? Tell me, what else you want to suggest or ask me or argue with me? Uh, hmm? I have an article that defends the Queen. It says the Queen's presence was a key part of making decolonization possible. So she's the one who helped it happen? Uh, yes, she helped make the colonies become independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see that in some subtle ways she did what she could. Yes. She could not do everything all in one go, of course. But, you know, when the situation was favorable, she did what she could to help others to be independent. What use is it to her if she rules some more countries in your life? Yes, Master. What is it? She has everything she needed. She was a contented person. She was busy with her job and busy loving all the animals she could see. She, she had geese, she had horses, she had dogs. <laughs> 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 and others, you know, in numbers. Yes. yes. She had the whole country to take care of. Household to instruct things and she had many meetings with the parliament, with the prime minister, with the government people, with the church people, all kinds of things. And she had her family, children to take care of, her grandchildren and all that. So I would a person like that even want to expand her, her rule or have more countries to rule? Yes, yes, yes master. master. Prince Philip calls her the psychotherapist of the Commonwealth. That she's, She knows all the leaders, she hears their problems, and they see her as a kind of mother figure. Mother, wife, queen. The job requires Elizabeth to play them all, and much more besides. Yet despite being the most famous face on earth, being monarch can be an isolating job. You are guardian of a whole heap of secrets you can't even share with your, with your husband. You spend a lot of time with strangers. You are expected to know exactly why you're somewhere, why the people you're speaking to are, are there. I think it's a very lonely job. 
A very lonely job. And if the Queen was really a colonizer at heart and all that, why could India become free, independent? Yes, Master. Yes, Master. And Singapore. Yes, Master. Yes. Yes. Or Malaysia, when they were together, Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, many other countries. Many countries became independent. It was like 30-something, and now only like uh, 14. So many, many have already become independent. You can't blame the queen for anything, absolutely. Nada. Mix. Niente. Zero. Yes, master. That's my opinion. And people can protest against me if they want. Welcome. <laughs> 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 I just tell the truth, truthful to my heart. And my heart always dictates to me what to do. Yes, yes master. master. And my heart is truthful. Our deepest gratitude, most compassionate Master, for teaching us the path of true appreciation, respect, and humility. Serving others through our innate loving kindness and wisdom paves the way for a more noble society and builds more stable and rewarding relationships. We pray for God's protection over all dedicated and hardworking leaders. May they become even greater examples of benevolence as they adopt the most meritorious vegan lifestyle and thus help secure a brighter, more prosperous future where humanity grows in peace and love. May precious Master enjoy perfect health and tranquility, safeguarded by all merciful goddesses. To hear more of Supreme Master Ching Hai's thoughts on the monarchy in the United Kingdom, as well as a story revealing how Master treats people in her household or anyone who helps her along the way, please tune in on Monday, October 3rd, 2022 on Between Master and Disciples for the full broadcast of this conference. Also for your reference, please check out the previous related fly-in news or between Master and Disciples conferences, such as Between Master and Disciples, Reign with Compassion and Consideration for All Sentient Beings, The UK Must Follow Its Laws and Protect Animal People as Sentient Beings, There Are No Excuses for Invading a Country, In the Hour of Heaven's Judgment, Wake Up and Be Vegan Now, etc. To view these and more related fly-in news and Between Master and Disciples conferences, all free for download, please visit suprememastertv.com and search for The British Monarchy.